time now to ask the expert here to answer your questions live on the air is Dr. Natasha Bouillon. All right, our first one comes from Mike. He says, I feel like my stomach always hurts. Will pre or probiotics help? Well, that's a good question, Mike. And before you take pre or probiotics, it is good to see your doctor about that because if your stomach is always hurting, there are lots of reasons why and it's better to have it checked out, understand what's going on. And maybe it is IBS, maybe it's not, but get a recommendation from a doctor. It's symptoms like those that we don't want to ignore. Yeah, they're gonna know you best. Yes. All right, Leslie from Phoenix says, what do all the different strains mean? Oh, Leslie, that's such a great question because it can be overwhelming. Yes. And so the way I think about the strains is that probiotics have three different names. It's a genus, a species, and then a strain number. It's almost like a first, a middle, and a last name. Okay. And you need to know the right genus, species, and strain number when you're researching probiotics. Because when you look at the research, people who got the right probiotics for the right conditions, they're the ones who thrived. Um, so when you're looking for a probiotic, Look for one that has a variety of strains in it. One of the ones I always recommend is Lactobacillus acidophilus. That's a probiotic um, strain that's great for gut health, okay. but make sure it doesn't just have one strain, but a variety, and make sure that you're researching all three names and they match the one that you're looking for. Okay, well, yeah, because sometimes I think I see like, you know, over dozens of strains. Yes, exactly, right? yes. Yeah, this is why it's good to know the genus, the species, and the strain name. Oh my good, first, second, third. All right, <laughs> Debbie in Gilbert says, if I want to take a prebiotic supplement, are the shelf stable type good or should it be the refrigerated type? I've yeah. always wondered shelf versus refrigerated. Exactly, and this is a confusing one. So essentially when we think about probiotics, they're effective when they're alive. And so probiotics, they continue to die once they're in a little package. The refrigerated ones are more stable because they're able to live a little bit longer. Okay. The shelf ones though, they are good as long as you look at this thing called the CFUs, the colony forming units. And you need to look to see how many CFUs does your probiotic have, and you're not just looking at the manufacturer date, it's the expiration date. Oh. So, you know, the date of manufacturing, it might be 10 billion CFUs, but then within a couple of months, now it's down to 1 billion. It's not right. enough. And right. so I would say read the package, read the expiration date, and look for CFUs that are 5 to 50 billion. I know that seems right. like a lot, but that's how much you need to start off with as um, the organisms die. Okay. I like the refrigerated type. That being said, it's because it just lasts longer, it's more alive, it's more expensive, yeah. so do your research. And of course, probiotics are not regulated by the FDA, so the most important thing is to do your research. Okay, or ask your doctor. Ask your doctor ask as well. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> At you. the end of the day, yeah. all right. Donna says, can you talk about the benefits or disadvantages of kombucha? This is a hot topic. So for a while there, all I heard about was kombucha, yes. and then it kind of fell out of favor, and that's because there's risks and benefits. So kombucha, it's fermented tea. It does have probiotics in it, and so it is beneficial for some people. But like everything else in medicine, it needs to be in moderation. So people who are taking kombucha multiple times a day, they would notice that they're getting headaches, they're getting nauseated, they're actually getting an upset stomach, so it's doing the opposite of what we want it to do. If people use kombucha in moderation, though, it's great because it does have probiotics in it, but other risk of kombucha is people were fermenting these at home, and when that was happening, if they did it incorrectly, it would overgrow bacteria or it would grow mold. Whoa. And so you've got to be cautious. Look at the sugar content as well. So there's pros and cons, but in moderation, it is a safe um, option for probiotics. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned the sugar thing because some of them can be really Too much, high. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Fernando from Glendale says, should people with gastroparesis take pro or prebiotics? Good question, Fernando. So for people who don't know, gastroparesis is a, is a medical condition where essentially your stomach muscles, they're not squeezing really well, and so you're not digesting or moving food through your body well. We sometimes see this in people who have diabetes, but we can see it in other people as well. You know, people come in, they say their stomach hurts, they have indigestion. Mm -hmm. Now, there's been research on pro and prebiotics for gastroparesis, and we haven't actually seen an improvement. I wish it did work, mm -hmm. but the study is kind of inconclusive. Yeah. But there are other treatments for gastroparesis, so certainly reach out to your doctor. Okay, so don't waste your money on it yet. On probiotics. Yeah, it exactly. doesn't work. Natasha, that was so good. Thank you so much. I know we have more viewer questions, so I know I'm going to cut you loose. You're okay. going to go in the green room and answer more Happy for to you. Do so.